In some of my other videos, I've talked about communicating with your 3D printer directly over a serial console using your computer. Now, what is a serial console and how do I do that using my computer? That's what I'm going to explain. I'm going to show you how to set that up and how to use a utility called Pronterface. I'm doing that in under 10 minutes right here on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. First of all, what are you doing when you're connecting your computer over to your 3D printer over a USB cable? Well, the 3D printers are going to be running something called firmware, and what that is is that's embedded software on the 3D printer. Most of the 3D printers out there today, particularly the inexpensive ones, are going to be running an open source firmware called Marlin. Now, Marlin has an input and output connection called a serial terminal, and that serial terminal can be accessed directly over USB. Now, once you've made that connection over USB, then you can see the output from the firmware, which will allow you to see errors, get settings, and it will also allow you to send commands from your computer to your 3D printer. That allows you to set settings and even directly 3D print from your computer. So this gives you a lot of power, and particularly if you have a 3D printer such as the Ender 5 Plus, whose user interface gives you limited access to some of these settings, this will give you the power you need to configure your 3D printer correctly. So now let's move on to what do you need to do this tutorial. So for today's tutorial, you're only going to need three things. You're going to need your 3D printer, of course, with a USB cable that matches the kind of connector found on your 3D printer, and then you're going to need some sort of PC, Mac. The software I'll be using today is available for Mac, Linux, and Windows. Now let's talk about which software you're going to need to actually do this. First of all, you're going to need to get whichever drivers are necessary for your printer. They're going to be available on the USB stick that came with your printer or via your printer manufacturer's website, hopefully. Uh, for me, I'm going to be using the Ender 5 today. So that is the FTDI USB drivers, which is a very common USB driver. I'll also be putting these uh, in the description below in case you need to download them. And then, of course, you'll need to download Pronterface itself. Pronterface itself is on Pronterface.com. They call it Print Run because it is a suite of utilities that include Pronterface. As you can see, there are a bunch of features here that you can go through. So if you need to download this, simply go to the download link at the top of the page, and you can find uh, Windows and OS X binaries, as well as uh, the Linux utilities, which are available via various sources, depending on which distribution you're running. There's a README file right here, which gives us some of the quick how-tos on how to navigate the software, how to install the software on various operating systems, things like that. First of all, let's turn on our 3D printer. Let it boot all the way up to whichever screen it sits at when it's ready to print. Then we're going to attach the USB cable to the computer and then to the printer itself. At this point, your operating system should go and identify the printer. If it doesn't, then you're going to need to either install the EXE or whichever executable comes with the printer that includes the drivers. We can check under Windows to see if the drivers have been initiated correctly by coming here and seeing if we have ports. So notice right here we have USB to serial uh, CH340 COM4. This tells us which COM port the printer has been connected to. This is the port we're going to use to communicate with the printer. Now, if for some reason this came up and it could not find drivers for it, you may have to come in here and say update driver, and then Windows will walk you through where to find it. If you already have the driver locally, you can do browse my computer, and then it will install the drivers. Mine did find it. It's on COM4. Now, before we run this, it's important to note you can't be running any other thing that might try to use that printer interface. So, for example, Cura has a bad habit of capturing that interface, meaning that at that point we can't use it in another application. So then we can run the printerface executable. Now, notice if it already have found a printer, it's going to pop that COM port up here automatically for us. Now, if we have more than one printer connected to our computer, or if there are multiple devices that use COM ports, we may need to change the drop down here to pick a different one. Obviously, this COM port is correct from our computer because we saw that in our device manager. Now we can come over here, set the baud rate. Now, the baud rate of the computer is how fast does the computer speak to the printer. Now, this is going to be a hard-coded value set by your printer. Most modern printers are going to talk at 
115200. Now, if that doesn't work for you, you can basically play with it and see if you can find which one or do a quick Google search to see if you can find out which one that is for your printer. Now, over here, let's talk about the user interface. On the left here is how we're going to do some nice UI user interface controls for our printer, printer movements, heating up the printer, that sort of thing. Here we can load G code files and STLs. And over here on the right is going to be our actual console that comes from the printer. This is the output and input control for our printer. Now, if we hit connect, we're gonna see connecting over here. And notice when we have a successful connection, it should do some sort of print that acknowledges that we've connected correctly. In this case, Marlin 119, you can see this is my custom firmware that's available on my share and shows when it's compiled and then gives us a bunch of settings that are set already in our printer. This lets us know that it's connected. Now, before I talk about the console, which is over here on the right, let's talk about the user controls that are here on the left. I'm gonna show you my printer here so that you can see what's going on. Now, I can move my printer using these controls. So for example, if I want to home my printer, I can hit this button. And you'll see my printer is homing just like it would have done if I would have done it from the user interface of the printer itself. Now at this point, I can start moving different axes of the printer by different amounts. So if I want to move the X axis in the positive direction by 10, I would click here. Or on this printer, it homes to max so I can move it. Notice the different values here that corresponds to each ring, I can do in the negative 10. You notice it moves negative 10. If I want to move Y negative 10, I can move Y negative 10. Or if I move to the outer ring, that would be negative 100. So now let's move on to the center area. Now printer face has a lot of features. Some of them I don't use. This whole middle area I don't particularly use because I get the same sort of controls in Cura. But if I want to, I can load STLs, which is this file, or I can load G code files and view them here. So starting with the G code, it'll load up. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that this is slow. And this is slow for loading G codes. It's slow as well loading STLs because with the STL loading, it actually has a built-in slicer. So as you see it loading here, you'll notice that each layer is popping up. Now, I'll let you know I've had graphical glitches a lot with this where it doesn't pop up correctly or they show up as solids rather than showing the infill. So just letting you know, this part of the program has had issues on my computer before. So at this point, I've restarted Face to speed it back up again. And we are going to focus here now for what we came here for, which is the console. So at this point, I can run any G code command that I want on the console. Now, what is G code? G code is just simple, human readable, human typable code that the printer understands. And Marlin has a great reference that's available at marlinfw.org slash doc slash G code. And you will see the various G code commands. Browse around here if you're unfamiliar with G code, you're gonna see these in a lot of other tutorials. So for example, if I want to do a manual home on my printer, I can do a G28 and hit enter. And again, just as before, with the button, you'll see that it's actually doing a home on the printer. And while it's doing it, before it's ready again, I'm going to get this busy processing. And then once that stops printing, I'm ready for my next command. Now, for example, if I wanted to run a setting, say I want to set the steps per unit of one of my axes, then I can come in here. Notice this is steps per unit here, which is M92. And then I can say, say I wanted to do a different number of E steps, which is a very common thing I'm asked about. You do M92E100, and then if I hit enter, it's going to say it sent it. And then if I do an M503 and look right here, you'll see that that setting has taken. Now, of course, if I want to then store those values, I can simply just do an M500. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to change my E steps on this printer. But there we go. That's a simple way to set different settings and to get values back from your printer. Well, I hope that provided all of the information you needed to get started connecting your 3D printer to your computer. And I hope that was enough tutorial on printer face to get you going. If you have any additional questions about this process procedure, if you have any problems getting your setup, 
please leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to you or hopefully another member of the community will. If you have any suggestions for tutorials for this under 10 minute series, please leave them in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. And if you'd like to support this channel, I have a PayPal link down in the comments below as well as a Patreon link. But as always, thank you for just watching my videos. Thanks for commenting and thank you for leaving a like and subscribing. That's it for today here on Cozy Fabrications. See you next time.